Okay, well, thank you, Chris. All right, so next up we have Tish Shoot, and she is a mobile AR strategist and reality architect currently doing RD at the Stupid Fun Club. That sounds like fun, right? Okay, so she is the founder of YouGo Trade, and today her speech is Becoming a Reality Architect. Enjoy. Um, just a little correction. Actually, it's on becoming a reality architect, so I don't use that title yet. So it's, I, I see this talk as a kind of looking for the sweet spot between Kevin Slavin's talk on how algorithms shape our world and Scott Heifman, who got us facing each other, talking to each other, and pointed out that people curate the world now, not speakers, not corporate CEOs, not broadcasters, but us. So where do these two realities um, you know, meet? And, at, and also, if you haven't watched TD, um, a Total Drama Island, everything you need to know about reality television, you can learn there. Um, so this came up because someone suggested to me that I should, that I don't know whether they misheard something I said, they said, oh, you're a reality architect. And I sort of started thinking about it, and I, I thought what I liked about it is it conjured tons of agency. It's like, wow, God, you know. Um, and this is a world where, you know, when the, between these two extremes of the algorithms that shape our future and the fact that we really, you know, we are curating our reality. Where do they meet? And then my extremely clever friend said, yes, and the tagline is, she puts the reality back into augmented reality which I, of course, really like, because I have a, a long background in augmented reality. I began my career doing motion control photography, creating visual effects for film and television. And motion control photog the motion control era was really key in creating design fictions that are still lurking in our visions of AR today. Um, so, of course, when we got our smartphones, I would jump right in and focused on mobile local experiences and making AR a reality. It was a dream come true. This is a project, it's an open federated system for um, geolocating data of any kind. It's called AR Wave and some, a group of open source developers are still working on it. Um, AR, AR, AR can um, have some quite dystopic visions. If you haven't seen this awesome video by Kichi Matsuda, go after this, go straight and take a look, because this is a vision of augmented hyper-reality. And Kevin Slavin has also pointed out some of the problems of kind of just conceptualizing augmented reality as visual layers over the world, which can, in fact, obscure um, your experience of reality in ways that aren't so interesting. Um, so I've been lately getting really into this idea, and you can tell I like taglines, so of making reality more interesting, which of course is kind of um, an open-ended thing. And I really love this app, Meet Gatsby. Um, Meet, app, Meet Gatsby orchestrates small world moments, um, creates contextually aware serendipity in real life. This is stuff I'm really interested in right now. Um, but of course, we already have experts in making reality more interesting. Um, I, I just, I have no ambitions to that. Don't, don't want to go there. Um, I'm interested in technology and storytelling. That's sort of the thread through my life. I've done, like all of us, the many pivots, but I keep my core thread. Um, this is another startup I find very interesting. Um, it's OkCupid, okay and they're solving dating problems with math, data, and storytelling. Um, working at that in intersection of algorithms and storytelling. And they've been, I, actually they've managed to really hit above their weight doing these kind of infographics that give people kind of new social intelligence and where they fit in these spectrums, like who would guess that these profile wor words told you something about whether you were interested in rough or gentle sex, but they do. Um, Meet Gatsby is beginning to tie this into location, tie the social graph, tie
tie the interest graph into location, which is a, opening up new possibilities for creating an opportunity space. Um, you're probably familiar with some of this sort of data storytelling stuff from the new corporate intelligence. There's some very big guns in, in the math world and string theorists going after it. And Quid is a company, another company I think is really smart, doing super work. Um, and Sean Gurley has this phrase, augmenting our ability to perceive this complex world. And he did this wonderful little um, uh, infographic that he showed at Strata, and I've augmented it with this idea of where I think a reality architect, or I think I'm beginning to like data storyteller a bit, at least I did when I put that in there, operates. It is, it's right at this intersection, somewhere between you know, the experiences we had when we did Scott's exercise and talked to each other, and the world of where algorithms are search shaping our world and like blasting out huge sections of the country to make them run faster. Um, and I'm, I suspect many of you are uh, already familiar with the quantified self movement, which this, you know, this is another sort of landmark in this, the new forms of personal intelligence. And, oh, did I jump a slide now? And, but what's interesting about this is now we're beginning to you know, it's not just this isolated experience of logging every moment of your day, but bringing it into sharing and benchmarking, and this is a little app mood scope that helps you lift your mood with a little help from your friends, which sounds good. Um, so when I thought about this, I realized actually most of, a lot of my friends are reality architects. Um, isn't that the case when you come up with a new idea? Um, for yourself. And anyway, this is, a, this is a, a company, Green Goose. And again, it's something I really like because he's using very, very simple sensors to give us you know, new opportunities to transform everyday things into play. Um, and I think that's, if you want, you're going to be a reality architect. Um, that's the sweet spot. I mean, that's something you might aspire to. That's, some, that's an idea worth spreading. Um, and then also, this is sort of something I think that's partially grown out of quantified self, but um, Nick Crocker um, does this wonderful talk, I think he's done it as a TEDx talk, on habit design. And how that you can actually, there exist these very small hacks that can make very big changes in our life. And uh, again, that's re -arch reality architecture I think I can get behind. And this is another, um, yeah, Aisha Biesel is a, I mean, a really awesome world-class designer. And what she's been paying her attention, putting attention to is this idea of design the life you love. And you can actually do a workshop with her. And she points, she's tackling life and architecting reality as just any other design problem. And if you visualize it, you can make changes. Um, and the other thing we all know that's going on, that we have these powerful sensors in our pockets, and you know, this is turning the whole world into a storytelling platform. Another cool little startup, I'm sure it's probably in beta, who knows where it's going, but it's, it's a signpost of what's going on here. And HipGeo takes your little everyday activities and then spits out an, a nice little travel diary at the end of the day that you would never have time to do, that you can share. And, um, okay, we've seen Iron Man once, um, but I'm bringing it up for, not for any of the visual reasons, although there's lots of interesting things you can say, but I think if you watched Iron Man, you noticed that there was a lot of attention put into the dialogue between the AI, the, the, hard as a, um, the sentient part of the hard as a character, this is interesting. This is really interesting. This is a re you know, the real sweet spot, I think, between this interaction between people and algorithms. And I think you haven't quite got the right title, but other than if you're, if you're moving on from reality architect, or it might be just in your role description, certainly the aesthetics of artificial intelligence is what this is all about. It's those interactions that provoke the human mind. It's not this kind of all, I mean, we all know that the, artificial intelligence has moved on in its conceptualization from a kind of 
you know, the great machine that knows all, to this kind of interaction, again, between people and algorithms. So the aesthetics of this interaction were very carefully thought out in Iron Man, and I think it's very interesting. So, because um, I'm sort of closing up here, um, just sort of what would be sort of catch, catch words to what I think I should be doing now as a reality architect, and I think it's a point we're moving from maps to tools. So it's not just visualizations. It's things that can help people make reality more usable, more constructible, more relatable. And I mean, I think that's our job as kind of technologists and storytellers and cool designers. Um, and build technology that helps us live extraordinary lives. This is a, a, a nice little app that's in the MoMA Talk To Me show, which if you haven't been to run, it closes November the 7th. But it, you know, it brings unexpectedness into the present. It's the, from the situationist tradition, which was to kind of give you a skew on the world so that you actually could appreciate the world and its extraordinariness. Um, and finally, create opportunities, more opportunities for serendipity and fun. And never underestimate the power of the phone toss, as I think Scott <laughs> pointed out. Thank you. Thank you.